Okay, good morning everyone. Today again, I am here in front of you conducting a class specially for class 10 WB. Today's class is for 10 WB and the topic that I am going to start today is our runaway kite. This chapter, I am going to start a new chapter. So this story is written by Lucy Mont Montgomery. She was born in the year 1874 and she died in the year 1942. She was from Canada. She was a Canadian writer and especially she was best known. She was prolific writer. She was renowned writer because she not only wrote the short stories because she wrote number or series of novels beginning with Annie of Green Gables. Annie of Green Gables is the first novel that Lucy Mont uh, Montgomery she wrote. After that, after this novel, she started writing series of novels. Besides series of novels, she even wrote lots of poems and even short stories. So this is all about the writer. Please note down. summary of the story. It's a very short summary. I go through the stories as well. So this story basically is about a brother and sister whose name uh, whose name was Claude and a uh, brother and a sister living on an isolated island. Isolated means deserted island. I hope that you know the meaning of an island. I have to a uh, piece of land surrounded by waters. So with their father who though a series of incidents get reunited with their long lost relatives. So there in this island there was an island named, the name of the island was Big Half Moon. So in this island there used to stay one father and his two children. One was brother and a sister. These three family they used to stay in that island and they didn't have any relatives surrounding them. Okay, they have been departed from their relatives since many years back. So they are staying in an island, just only three of them. So they are away and they have been abandoned from the relatives. So at the end of the story, there is a twist at the end of the story where these three family, that is brother, sister and a father, where they get united with their aunt and a cousins. So this story basically we can say it is a value, it is how to value the relationship. Because relationship is a very important, uh, it's very important in our life because we all maintain our relations like you have a parents, you have a bonding with your parents, that's a kind of a relation. You have your brother and sister, this, that is another relation. So if there is a relation among us, we will be able to share our problems. There will be a very happy family ever and after. But in this story, at first you'll come to know that these families are being departed. So later on at the end of the story, the twist comes is that again they get reunited with their families and reunited with their relatives and basically focuses on the value of relationship. Please note down this summary. Okay, students, let's go ahead with the story. Unit 1. Of course, there was now nobody for us to play with on a big half moon. So here, big half moon is mentioned. Big half moon. It's a name of an, this is a name of an island. Big half moon is a name of an island. Okay, so there was nobody to accompany brother and sister as well as a father, these three of them in that big half moon. We just have to make the most of each other and we did. So most of the time, these three family members, they have to be together with one another. Next, we live on the big half moon island, we, our father and Claude and I. It used to be only father and Claude and I, it is all on account of the kite that where there were more of us. This is what I want to tell you about. 
And basically the writer wants to say, I here is say to the writer Lucy Montmorency, Mont Montgomery. She is the main character of the story and she is telling the story of her life. That she along with the brother and father, all these three of them were only staying in that island. There were no other family members, there were no other relatives staying there. Father is the keeper and father, writer's father is the keeper. Father is the keeper of lighthouse. G H T H O U S E. In that island, there is one big lighthouse. So his uh, her father was the keeper of that lighthouse. And the writer at that time she was of eleven years old, and her brother whose name was Claude he was twelve years old. So during winter, what happened during winter? The river used to get all frozen and they were not able to stay there nearby that ocean. Okay, so they have to go to the back side of that island. That is that area was called as a mainland. Okay, so they have to shift at the back side of an ocean because from sea all uh, you when you feel when you stay in front of a sea or in front of a river or in front of an ocean, you find the coolness and very cold breeze. So they couldn't see the stay there. So during winter they used to shift back to the mainland areas. And again during spring and summer season, they used to come in their same place, just in front of an ocean. The funny part used to be that people always teached us, when the time came for us to return, they said we must be so lonesome over there with no other children near us. Of course, Claude and I would have liked to have someone to play with us. It is hard to run pirate caves and things like that with only two. But we used to quarrel a good deal with the men and children in winter, so it was perhaps just as well that there were none of them on the big half moon cloth and I never quarreled. So what here the writer is saying is that in the mainland at the back part of an island there used to be some family members used to stay together and only those family members used to tease this brother and sister that they don't have any cousins any other family members to play with only they had they these two brother and sister used to be only there to play. Where whatever the game, whatever the thing they used to play, only these two used to play. And in comparison, in comparison to that, they never quarreled. They never fought with each other. Okay? Because if they fight with each other, then they alone have to play. And the other families who stays in the mainland, they used to tease them. So they never quarreled. To be sure, father didn't seem to have any relations except us. This used to puzzle Claude and me. Everybody on the mainland had relations. Why had it been? Was it because we lived on an island? We thought it would be so jolly to have an uncle and aunt and some cousins. Once we asked father about it, but he looked so sorrowful that we wished we hadn't. He said it was all his fault. Claude and I didn't understand what he meant. So, they really they used to feel lost. There used to be a lot of questions in their mind that why they don't have any relations, any relatives in that island. Why they are all alone every time. They could see only three of them together in an island. They couldn't see anybody coming and visiting them. So there used to be a questions in their mind and uh, most of the time, uh, we can say once they have asked a question to their father that why they don't have any relations. At least aunt and some cousins they should have. So when they used to ask these questions, their father, he used to look very sorrow, depressed and upset. And they used to feel regret for asking the questions to father. It is always lovely on the big half moon in summer. When it is fine, the harbor is blue and calm. And with little wind and ripples, every summer we had some hobby. In the last summer before Dick and Mimi came, we were crazy about kites. A boy on the mainland showed Claude how to make them. Back on the island, we made plenty of kites. Claude would go around to the other side of the island and we would play ship red mariners signaling to each other while with kites. So, during summer season, the mariners, the oceans looks, used to look very pleasant. Used to look bluish in color with cool breeze they used to feel. And they used to feel that in that cool breeze, why can't they play a game of flying a kite? So, some of the boys staying in that island taught Claude to make a kite. So they used to make a kite and they used to play out there. <coughs> we had a kite that was big and covered with lovely red papers. So this Claude and the sister, both of them, they decided to make a very big kite. Okay, during summer season as their cool feet it blows, they are able to fly up the kite. So they decided to make a kite. 
So they, when they started making kai, they made a kai with the red paper, which would look very attractive. And not only that, they pasted some gold tinsels, a type of a star, all over that kai. And not only that, after making the kite, after completely making the kite, they wrote their name at the end of the kite. That their name was Claude Leet and Philippa Leet. They wrote this name and their address, that is Big Half Moon Lighter. That is their real, that is their present address where they were staying. And one day, there was a grand wind for kite flying. And one day during summer only, there was a nice weather, the way they could fly up their kite. I am not sure how it happened, but as I was bringing the kite from the house, I tripped and fell over the rocks. My elbow went clear through the kite, make a big hole. So, they had made that kite and kept it in a lighthouse. So, when they saw the weather, it was very much pleasant for them to fly up the kite. They went to the lighthouse and they, uh, while she was bringing the kite to play, suddenly she got hurt somewhere and she fell down. And mistakenly, her elbow got inside that kite which made a big hole there in the kite so we have to now without if there is a hole in a kite you cannot fly up that kite you have to paste that hole now if we wanted to send it up before the wind fell we rushed into the lighthouse to get some paper so before the wind drops down they have to repair the kite so to repair the kite hurriedly they went to the lighthouse and they tried to find any sort of paper whichever they get and while trying to find out there in a table they could find one piece of paper and without knowing what that paper is without going through what that paper is they just bought and they just pasted it there we passed the kite up with the letter of seat on each side and tried it up by the fire we started out and up the light kite, uh, kite like a bird the wind was glorious and it soared all at one snap and there was Claude standing with a bit of cord in his hand and he polished our kite had sailed away over to the mainland. So without looking into anything else, they just pick up one piece of paper they saw and they just pasted it in the kite. And that, lit, that paper which they pasted in the kite was a letter actually. But whose letter and who had sent to whom I'll tell you later on. So after they repaired the kite, now they were busy um, flying up the kite. But while they were flying up the kite, while they played with the kite, suddenly the cord of a kite got cut off. So the kite got flew away somewhere else and got and uh, the cord, uh, the what do you call this? Uh, the cord left was left in the hand of a cloud only. So what happened the next? A month later, after one month, after one month, uh, a letter arrived for their father. And after he finished reading that letter, the father started to cry. And then he asked to his children, "Do you know what came, what happened to your kite?" The father asked this question to their children. Then he said, he just sat down and he asked his two children to sit near him and he told the story. Then he told the story that his father had a brother and a sister. Claude and their father, the writer's father had a brother and a sister. Okay. But once they fought with each other. So when they fought, writer's father, he left the house and he went away. But after a few days, he realized his mistake. And he, when he came back to meet his brother and sister to ask for an apology, he found that his brother was dead and he couldn't see his sister. His sister was missing. So that is why the letter father had just received was from his sister whose name was Aunt Esther. And the name of his sister was Esther. And this Esther had two children whose name was Mimi and Dick. Okay? Sister. And she was a widow. Her husband had died before only, so she was a widow. After the after writer's father and his brother fought, he left the house. And after a few days, when he went back to meet his brother and sister, he found his brother was dead, and sister alone cannot stay there. So sister, her sister was also not in the house. But now, after so many years back, when the children were playing with the kite and the kite got disappeared. Suddenly, he got a letter from somewhere and that letter was none other than sent by his own sister, Esther. And this is the story which the father is telling to his children. And that sister, Esther and Mimi and Dick, these three families, they used to stay just a bit far from where the writer and his father and sister, brother were staying. So one day when he and we were out in the woods, they discovered the car on top of a tree and carried it home. 
So Aunt Esther's children, Mimi and Dick, they had just come out from their place and they were just roaming in a forest, in a jungle, uh, in hunt for some fruits, some food. So in that case, they found the kite being hanging in a tree. So they just took out the kite and they took back home. So when they took back the kite back home, his mother just got noticed in the kite that there was a piece of letter. And when she got that piece of letter, when the mother saw the kite passed with the letter, she turned pale. It was the very letter she had transmitted to her brother. And that was the letter which the children had pasted in the kite was a letter which the aunt Esther had written to her brother, that is the writer's father. And they, without reading, without going through the paper, they just pasted it in the kite. Okay. So, Philippa was a mother's name and Claude was a father. And the name of the Esther and writer's father's parents were Philippa, Philippa and Claude. Their father's and mother name Philippa and Claude. And that is why the writer's father kept his children, that is brother and sister's name, Philippa and Claude. Understood? So Philippa was okay. She knew who were who we must be. So she sat down and wrote to be Gautam and father received the letter. Next day, that is how father received the letter from a sister. And that is how father told the story about his family's uh, past where whom he left back. And here, writer and his brother and her brother came to know that they also have the relatives. They also have the relations. They wanted to know this since many years back, but the father, he was speechless. And now the father told all the story about his life to his children. And the next day, father decided to go and bring his sister and his sister's two children. And they decided to stay together. And when the next day, father went to bring his sister Esther, Esther, Mimi and Dick, they brought back to the light, uh, uh, what do you call this, big half moon in an island. And they were very happy. Kids were, Mimi, Dick, brother, sister, these four of them kids were very much happy because there won't be anybody else left in Ireland to tease day. There will be a relations together. So they started to lead their life happily ever and after. And the last, the moral of the story, it tells you is that you have to value that. Uh, you have to have the value of the relationships right now. Your father is there, your mother is there, your siblings, your brother, your older sister, your uncle, your uncle, whoever is there. You have to value the relationships. Because later on, if that relation, if that relative goes far away from you, that time if you repent and that, that time you regret for that relation, that will be of no use. So whatever you have now, whoever is there with you, you have to value that relation. And that is very much important. This is the moral of the story. Please go through this video. I request all the students so that it will be easy for you to do the further exercise for this chapter. Thank you.